let's just get started. Let's get on. In case we okay. will have technical difficulties, we can always uh, repost this recording, but I just got a note from Roseanne that everything is okay. So hello, real estate rock stars. Thank you for tuning into our Wednesday jam session. Today, my my guest on that side is Jim Steele. Hey, Jim, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Jim is one of our elite coaches here at Real Estate Rockstars. And today he carved a time in a busy spring season to talk about real estate. So, <laughs> Jim, how is your market? How is how is it down there in Florida right now? Why don't you tell everyone again, uh, remind them where you are based and uh, and how is the Florida market doing? Okay, my name's Jim Steele. I'm with the Steele Home Team. Uh, and we're in the... Uh, my office is in Land Lakes, Florida, uh, in Pasco County. We're about 20 minutes north of Tampa. So we handle the western side of Florida, basically. Um, and uh, I've been here, I've been doing this now for 20 years. So I feel old. <laughs> so <laughs> No, 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 uh, you're wise. <laughs> oh, that's it. I'm wise. Yeah, I'm wise beyond my years. <laughs> so hold on one sec. This dog wants to get down, so she's going down on the floor. Oh, she likes to run up on my on desk. On a podcast, that Jim just had a little assistant, little dog uh, assisting him. So he got, he I had got to put her down him. on her pillow, or she'll just keep bugging me. So um, the market is interesting. That's the word I'm going to choose uh -huh. because it's it officially is now a buyer's market in in my area, um, which we haven't seen in three years. So mm -hmm. that's pretty interesting. Um, we're starting to see homes sit on the market much longer. We're starting to see a lot more price reductions. So the, the, the interesting part of it is that we were growing at such a, a silly, ridiculous pace that the, um, we had like a 26% a year increase in value for, for the last couple, two or three years. Wow. Well, now it's 3% in the last calendar year. Which is so, normal, right? That, that which should is be more about normal. It. Yeah, that's more normal. So it's weird because the prices are still going up, but not as much. So it seems like they're going down. Because what's happening is people were listing at prices that were two years ago prices, the 26% prices. So now they're having to drop their price on their listing to get them to sell. So they're coming down to where it's still up 3% but not ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a really weird market. Um, interest rates spiked up last week and, and they're over seven and a half right now. Mm -hmm. So um, that is slowing things down a little bit. But I mean, you know what? We're still closing deals. I'm In fact, uh, I have two closing today. They're both remote or otherwise I'd be there. Um, but, uh, you know, we're still writing contracts, still selling houses. Mm -hmm. People are still moving. So we're seeing a lot of people starting to leave Florida, which is interesting. Wow. Um, can you, can you tap on it? because of the property you... taxes and the yeah. insurance have just gotten out of control. Like it's insanity. It is so expensive here. Uh, and it never was that way. We were always like one of the cheaper places to live. Can now you give an example always... so we really understand it in numbers? Yeah. Now we're looking at, we're, I mean, behind only California, New York and property or property value. So it's expensive. To give you a comparison, an average three-bedroom house in Tampa three years ago, we were averaging probably right around 260, 270 or something. They're 440 now. So <laughs> yeah, it's and the problem is that the taxes and the insurance in particular have skyrocketed. I mean, they're crazy. Um, so it's a it's a challenging market for sure. But people still want to live here. And until yep. we don't have beaches and Disney and stuff, they're probably still going to keep coming. So we just keep doing what we got to do. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, you mentioned yeah. the interest rate, which is now around 7.5%. Mm -hmm. Well, the interest rate uh, grew over the last year. In the long run, how did it affect uh, buyers? If, if Well, it I mean, when, when they spiked up last fall, when they first started really going up, pushing 8%, uh, I mean, everything stopped. There mm -hmm. were no buyers. <laughs> like they were, they disappeared. So here's what you're seeing. You're seeing a certain segment of the, of the buyers 
are almost gone, but the other ones are still very strong. Okay. And it's about the price of the house. So here's what I've seen the the people who are more affected by these interest rate hikes and stuff are the lower income buyers. The people mm -hmm. buying the smaller, less expensive houses, the three hundred thousand dollar, you know, I mean, even I've even seen some getting in the you know high twos, maybe two seventy, two eighty now. So that didn't even exist really a year ago. So yeah. you're starting to see those those price points. But what's happening now with this spike in the rates are those buyers are the ones who really feel that that rate hike, like that changes that takes them from approved to not approved. So we're seeing that price point slowing down from probably like the 220 uh, to 350 mark is really slowed down a lot. Now, right. above that, above like the 500, like pushing the luxury market is as hot as it's ever been. We're, I just listed a house the other day for 620,000. It was gone in less than four hours. We had a full price cash offer in four hours. Yeah. So the rich people, it didn't hurt in them. Like they they're don't, still rich. they're not as affected as, yeah, they're still rich. They're still they're rich. Not they're affected still rich. by these rate hikes as the, you know, as the, the lower uh, income buyers are. So hmm. you're seeing that that price point is kind of languishing under, you know, under 400. And then yeah. there's kind of a dead zone in the four to 500 range. And then above 500, it's actually hot. Like those houses are selling quick. Wow. So it's really weird. It's a strange market. Very strange. So from you as a agent who's been in the fields for two decades plus counting. That um, sounds old. Two decades. That sounds better. It's just two decades. It's not 20 years. I don't know. It sounds old. <laughs> All right. I'll give you two wait, decades. Wait, wait, wait. Come back. Come back. Come back. Uh, so the question <laughs> is, if you have buyers, and obviously those are probably first-time buyers or young families who would like to mm -hmm. buy their, you know, little home for two twenty, two thirty, mm -hmm. um, and they cannot afford it, do you have any any ideas for a more creative way to approach it so they can actually afford it? That's it's a twofold. So that's the first question: how to help them to afford the house. But also how to how to help them to understand the 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 other expenses which are going to influence their monthly mortgage. So basically, yeah. you have to you are turning into a financial expert, right? Yeah, I mean, you really are right now because you have to help them under like set a budget, you uh -huh. know, and say, hey, we need to um, you know make sure that we keep this payment in line. So we may need to cut out some extra extraneous things that we're spending money on um, because you have to figure right now, it, on average in Florida, your escrows, which are your taxes and insurance that are added to your mortgage payment, are pushing $1,000 a month. I mean, that's unheard of. It's unbelievable. But I'm seeing it a lot. So taxes right now are over 2.5% on average of the purchase price. So it's five hundred thousand dollar house. You're looking at ten thousand dollars a year in taxes. So right. it's crazy. And and again, we've never had. Now I know people watching this in the audience are saying, "Well, I'm in California. That's nothing." Yeah, California, New York, they're different. But we're now on pace with those. You know, mm -hmm. myself, I came from Ohio. My taxes were like you know four or five hundred a year. You know, my insurance was like three hundred a year. It was cheap. So now we're seeing, you know, this giant uh, upgrade in, or I shouldn't say upgrade, increase in your in your escrows, um, and it's uh, you know it's slowing people down. They're like second thought now. Again, we also have flood insurance, which is another three or four thousand a year. Wow. So yeah, it gets expensive. So interesting. I have so many questions and so little time. Uh, mm -hmm. At what point? it will be just basically cheaper for people to keep on renting because I'm originally from Europe and uh, my daughter lives in Prague right now. And uh, it totally mm -hmm. didn't make a sense to purchase an apartment. It's just cheaper to rent. And, and it, it uh, I don't see that situation to change. What do you think about Florida? Are we heading? Florida rent's Florida? expensive. You know, I, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Yeah. Um, there's a house in my neighborhood right now. It's a five bedroom pool home or something. It's sorry if you can hear my dog barking. I don't know what her problem is. Um, there are uh, there's a house for sale for or for rent, I should say, 
for $3,450 a month. Uh huh. Now you could buy it for probably close to that number. Wouldn't be terribly different, but the rents are up as much as the house prices are in this mm. market. So you're really running into a situation in Florida where it's almost unaffordable. You know, here, you know what? I, I saw a study. You know what? Last year in the United States, 16% of the houses that were sold were affordable. Yeah, 16%. The rest, they were outside their comfort level. They're outside their means. As far as what their income was, as far as all that, what the expenses and stuff are, they were the house was deemed unaffordable. And Florida, wow. with, with these taxes and insurance and flood insurance and everything is becoming unaffordable. Like I think only, I want to say 4% of Florida houses were affordable. It was a mm. tiny percentage. So people are buying way outside of their means, way outside their comfort level. I mean, myself, like I, I wouldn't want that mortgage payment. Are you kidding? And I make a decent living, you know, More, I'm in the one percentile and yeah. it's like, no way, dude. I wouldn't want that payment. And I got first time home buyers buying $350,000, $380,000 houses that used to sell for, you know, two hundred. dollars So it's, it's weird. It's really a crazy that's market. That's interesting. Do you, do you tap into the affordability? Yeah. When, I mean, there are programs when you have down a buyer, here. You know, they might qualify, but you know, at the end. Of we that have some really good programs like in Florida. We have mm -hmm. some down payment assistance programs and things which give them free down payment money and stuff like that if they're at a certain income level and things like that. Um, you know, but as far as making offers and, and things, what we do is we coach our clients. Mm -hmm. Now that the houses are sitting for a while, once they get past like 30 days on the market, the leverage kind of shifts over to the buyer. Because mm -hmm. now we're like, listen, you know, you're not getting multiple offers in this house. It's not selling in a day. So now, how about you buy our rate down? We'll buy your house, you know? And so we really coach them to try and get the rate buy downs. Uh -huh. um, you know, do like a two one buy down for two years, your rate's 2% less. And then we bank on the fact that the market will come back down and you can refinance at a much better rate. So, you know, you gotta get more creative. Now, this is the interesting part of all this. A lot of the agents watching this right now and a lot of agents, in general, have come in the business in the last two or three years. Mm -hmm. They have never seen this kind of market. They don't know what to do. This is all brand new to them. They only have they've only seen multiple offers on every listing. Everyone wants it. You, you, you're getting a fifty percent over market value. This is the easiest job in the whole world. It's not. And now we're getting to the point where you have to have skill and knowledge and be able to educate your client and be able to say, listen, here's the best way to go about this um, because the old way is not working anymore. So you always have to be adapting in real estate. You always gotta, you gotta change your approach to what the market is doing and slowly agents are starting to come to that realization. Um, there was a whole lot of denial at first, like, oh no, it's still gonna stay crazy and crazy <laughs> things are gonna keep happening. No, uh -uh. no, the numbers do not lie. The data doesn't lie. And the fact that houses are, less now than they were a year ago in the fact that the, I mean, they're down 4% in my, in my market mm -hmm. house prices have come down four and a half percent in the last 12 months. So they're mm -hmm. definitely heading down. Um, and we're just going to keep seeing this market adjust and it keeps swinging, you know, more into a buyer's market. So buyers just have to be ready to um, understand what the expenses are going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, um, not just the mortgage payment, not just the tax and insurance, but you also got to think about the utilities, the upkeep, upkeep you know, the things yeah. that go with buying a house. I mean, it's not, it's not cheap, not here. So be aware of how much the electric bill is, you know, and I get that question a lot on my listings now because people are more conscious. How much is the electric bill? How much is their water bill? How much, you know, are they paying for? you know, this and that, and you know, how, how often do you have to run the AC, all that kind of stuff, which yeah. is every single day. Uh, in Florida. <laughs> Florida, absolutely. It's on now, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, I saw this really cool chart somewhere. Maybe I can find it. 
and it was listing all the appliances and what's their longevity, roof, windows, mm -hmm. AC. Yeah, and... that would be neat to see because that again, is... yeah. you have, oh, uh, Hannah just said, that, or Roseanne, I mean, just said that there's a question in the comments. I don't we'll pull see it. it. We'll pull it. <laughs> Can you see it? I can't see it. No. I will just... I will just ask her to text it. I'm worried if I jump into a Facebook, we will get an echo and then listening to myself. It's yeah, not... we don't want to do that. But but I I, I will look up. I will try to find a chart of uh, how what's the longevity on appliances on the roof and on everything. And I assume it will be different in Florida for certain things, right? Than to yeah. Colorado. But having a basic awareness, it's very important and continuously educating our clients. That is that's a must. Yes, right. definitely. And again, like I said, it's always changing. So you always got to be on top of what's happening and be able to, um, you know, give your clients the the best possible information um, because things can change. Like I said, this insurance thing is new. It wasn't this way a year ago. So what what, what happened? Why? Like I, I've noticed that even like our business car insurance is skyrocketing. Do you think they're just like not making money? So they have to figure out um, where Squeeze what it. happened here was, were hurricanes. Last mm -hmm. year, we had a really bad hurricane that hit actually on our coast, which usually doesn't happen. Our coast is usually kind of hidden from the hurricane path. But this time it smacked us around. Oh, I got the question. Want me to answer it? Oh, I see it. Like, Can I read Can I read a question? Oh, <laughs> yes, you can read it. Too. Well, let, me, let me tell you this real quick. Though. So the hurricane came and it was bad. And so a lot of people... Um, or actually, I'm sorry, not a lot of people, a lot of insurance companies left Florida. They pulled out. They said, we're done. We don't want to do this. It happened to me. So listen to this, my own mortgage payment. So I, people believe me, I'm living it too. It's not just the buyer. I, it happened to me, my own insurance company pulled out of Florida and, um, I had to switch to citizens who's like the main state supplier. And my mortgage payment went up $400 in September because that's how much my insurance went up. Per month? Not for, yes, per month. It went up, it doubled. My insurance was like 2,400, it went to 4,800 a year. That's tough. So, yeah, it was shocking. And it's happening not just to me, I mean, to a, a lot of people. So all these companies pulling out of Florida leave us only one choice and we're stuck with them. Uh, and you know, there's not much we can do about it. And that's why the insurance rates are going up. So what was the question? Um, okay, let's go, let's get back I, to it. I want to go to the question. Uh, Andrea, thank you so much for uh, chiming in with your question. And it goes like this. Um, I mostly work with listings. How do you deal with the challenge of sellers not wanting to list because they don't want to let go of their good interest rate for a high one to buy a new home? Yeah, I mean great. that's a great question, Andrea. And here's the thing: I'm I, I'm going through that. I want to move. I've been wanting to move for like a year. My wife won't do it. Why? Because we have a killer interest rate. We've had it for four years, and she's like, "Why do I want to move and pay it twice as much?" <laughs> Listen, that's not something you can easily overcome because it, it financially it doesn't make sense. Um, so what you're going to see, you guys and, and Andrea, is you're going to see the people who are selling have a legitimate need to sell. Mm -hmm. Before, we would see people selling just to try the market, just to try and cash out and make money. Like they knew they were sitting on a bunch of equity. So they said, listen, I want to sell my house and pocket all this cash. Okay. But now what's happening is you're only seeing people move who actually have to. Like there's a legitimate reason. Because it doesn't make sense unless you can show them somehow that there's a savings or some benefit to them to moving. Why would they? You know, why would you go from a two and a half percent fixed rate to a six percent fixed rate? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, they would unless have you're to totally so upgrading to a whole different type of home or something like that. Or moving so what states. You're not is you're not seeing the lateral moves. You know, where they would just go from one house to the other years ago like similar type houses. I just want to be in this neighborhood. You're not seeing that anymore. Now you're either seeing dramatic upgrades or downgrades, either they're downsizing, uh -huh. you know, or they're upsizing, um, or there's a situation where they have to move such as divorce, uh, death of a spouse, 
Um, relocation. Relocation, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. So yeah, very good question. But honestly, Andrea, the, the short answer to your question is, I don't think you can. Like I said, I mean, if there's not a real legitimate benefit to them, why would they? I wouldn't. Yeah. However, I would still stay in touch. But this yeah, home definitely put them on your follow up. And, you know, the market's not going to stay like this. Like I said, there, I'm already telling you there's signs of it going the other way. Um, the data doesn't lie. And I'm a, I'm a numbers guy. I like data. I like numbers. I like charts. I like graphs, you know. Yeah. Uh, and so I can tell you clearly we're heading the other direction. Prices are coming down regardless of what, you know, you hear on the news and stuff. They're coming down. Because, again, like I said, in my market, 4.5% drop in the last year. So, okay, there is another point, both you and I like numbers. So if there was a drop on a property pricing four and a half percent, you can, mm -hmm. you can put it in a position of versa, the mortgage rates. So mm -hmm. the client can still sell a rather high, take the loss in a mortgage, but then hopefully purchase cheaper. Does it make yeah. sense? Do you know what I'm trying <laughs> trying to calculate here? I mean, there's there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, you know. Yeah. Um, but again, it just depends on what they want to do, like what their ultimate goal is. What are, are they trying to get cash, you know, and have reserves, or or again, do they have another reason that they want to that they want to sell? But you're seeing a lot of people stay in put because the rates are so dramatically different. I mean, they're triple what they were a few years ago. Money, Triple. money isn't cheap. Money isn't free anymore. No, no it's not. <laughs> you make it. So, um, yeah, some some people may not be candidates right now. They may just have to wait until it makes sense. Um, now, I do think that the rates will come down. The Fed has talked about they're going to do, you know, probably four to five price drops this year. But they already skipped one. They were supposed to do one a couple of weeks ago, and they didn't. They held firm. They didn't cut them. And what that is saying to me is that the economy is better than they actually thought it was going to be at this mm -hmm. time. So they're not in a hurry because they want, they don't want inflation and yeah. they got to keep the rates up to kind of slow the, you know, the buyers down. So um, it's, it's, it's a two way street, but here's what happens. You guys, when the interest rates are up, the economy is good. When the interest rates are down, the economy is bad. Think about it. When was the last massive rate cut? That was during the Great Recession in 2008. Everything was terrible. We were literally in a recession. So they slashed interest rates to keep people buying homes. Okay, now they're up because the job report was better. The consumer price index is way up. Everything's much better. So they say, okay, well, then you can afford. They're basically telling us we can afford the house, so you got to pay for it. And that's what's going on. So it's it's funny, but we should actually, as realtors, root for a bad economy because that's when we get the good interest rates and can sell houses. So it's 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 a weird time right now. But um, again, it's a cycle. It happens every 12 years or so is, is when you'll see these cycles. The only reason this didn't happen in 2020, because remember, 08 was when the crash was 12 years later with 2020, and we were heading up. But then was the pandemic and the pandemic threw everything off. Um, so that put, that actually added about three years to the cycle. And now we're right now coming to the end of that cycle. And that's why you're seeing the changes that you're seeing with the interest rates and the, you know, the properties sitting longer and things like that. Yeah. Well, it's not interesting. We are all in like this big ecosystem. <laughs> yeah. You put it on one end and it will have a ripple effect on the other end. And we need to stay on top of it and watch it and uh, listen to someone like you because you come with expertise and I love it. And guys, just before I will say goodbye to you and Jim, I would love to remind you that tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, actually, it's a next, next, next Thursday, yeah. <laughs> like a week ahead on March 7th at 2 p.m. Jim and coach Mike are having their uh, monthly webinar when it will be about crushing objections role-playing, figuring out how to overcome complicated topics or difficult conversation, basically, you name it. And uh, did I miss anything, Jim? No, just tell them that they can ask anything. If you're struggling with something, if you ran into something, you know, you were on a listing appointment the other day and you said, oh, wait, how would I, I messed that up. How would I say, what, what could I do to overcome that? Bring it to the webinar. Ask Bring us. it to we'll the webinar. Yeah, when we'll, we'll they tell will you exactly ask how to you to lower your commission, bring it to the webinar. <laughs> yeah, bring it. 
bring it to the webinar, ask us any question. We're there to help you guys. Yeah, absolutely. And it is an hour and a half, I think, Max, uh, a lot of time for Q&A. Uh, last time when we had it, we had a great conversation, enough time to do role play, and we tapped into a lot of topics. And I think yeah. this is extremely it's fun. Important. It was fun. We had a good time. Yeah, I will ask Roseanne if she can add it uh, below in the comments. You can obviously reach out over Messenger or to me or Jim directly, and we'll help you to get the invitation link. And uh, looking forward. Otherwise, Jim, thank you so much for your time. It's always my pleasure. No problem. Okay. Greetings to sunny Florida. We are yes. raining in DC. <laughs> it's beautiful today. I got to be honest. Oh, stop it. Good. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that you have the star banner behind you and not the beach. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. thank you. Thank you again. And uh, I'm looking forward to have you back at the jam session and looking forward to get some more valuable information from you. Thank you very much. You bet. We'll see you next week. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs>